All right. I don't know what the point of this video is, but we're gonna make it anyways. Um, let's see. So as you guys, this is a little further back than normal. Is this okay? Um, as you guys know, just recently, I ended up selling the 28 millimeter Sumicron on my Leica M10. This bad boy right here, I have the 50 on it right now. I like the 50 and the frame lines a lot more. Um, and I did that because uh, when I first purchased this Leica M10, I was really, really torn between this M10 or the Leica Q2. And I ended up going with the M because, you know, I just felt like this was the true rangefinder experience. It's got the brass body. You know, it's, it's, it's purely Leica, purely Leica, besides maybe like a film Leica. And I got this 50 millimeter Summicron because like that's kind of like one of their staple legendary lenses. Um, and it just was the whole thing. But ever since then, I've wondered what a Leica Q2 would be like. And so um, I ended up buying the 28 millimeter Summicron, as you guys are aware, and it's okay. It, uh, it's a really good lens. It's just that I don't like 28 millimeters on the frame lines. If you picture the box, you know, let's say this box is the frame lines. The frame lines are, uh, the viewfinder, the frame lines are up against the edge. And when you put your eye up to the viewfinder, it's very hard to see your framing. It just wasn't great for me. Now for street photographers or whatever, it probably works because you just put your eye up, you do zone focusing F8 or F11, whatever it is, get the depth of field and you go. And it's really sharp and it's great for that. So anyways, I ended up selling that lens. That was the end of that. And I've been curious. Now what I really am after is that when I go to Nevis and other things this year, I want to just have a simple setup. People do it with the X100V, people do it with the Ricoh GRs. I'm kind of becoming a little bit obsessed with, uh, with uh, the full frame deal, which is stupid, I know. And of course I have my X100 or X-T5 as an option as well, but I wanted to do it. So I ended up renting the Leica Q2 from Borrow Lenses, as you guys can see right here. And I, instead of me like buying it and not liking it for $6,000 and like having to go through all that, um, yeah, we're not gonna do that. I don't know. Okay, nonetheless, we're gonna open this thing up. And this is how they package it from Borrow Lenses right here. So they give you the, the lens hood right there. They give you the battery right here. And they give you the charging cable, the charging block, and the camera itself, which, yeah, it's just like I remember. This thing's feels good in the hand. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, screw this. Actually, I'll leave the lens head off, forget it. Let's put the battery in here, just like that. This is like kind of like the SL2 and SL2S battery where it pops and then you have to do that bad boy to get it out. So that's that. Uh, let's see, they give me a memory card? Nope, I gotta put one in. We'll do that. But just on first, you know, first glance, if somebody wants to know, people always tout the Leica Q2 as like this, <clears throat> ultra portable camera. And this was one of the things that kind of got me away from buying it originally. But I've been curious ever since I had to scratch. When you look at a Leica M versus Leica Q2, here's a 50 millimeter Summicron, here's the 21.7. They're the same size. They're no different. Now this is lighter for sure because I don't think it's brass. I think maybe it's just like aluminum or something. Um, and the 28 Summicron was the same thing. And my thought process was, well, I'd rather have interchangeable lenses and go for the full Leica experience rather than just be limited to this. But since then, I've noticed that I like to have a closer focusing distance. Sometimes autofocus would be nice. And the ability to close focus, like I said, with the macro capability is on this Leica Q2. Um, when I was skiing, this really kind of triggered the idea of like, you know, I don't really like this 28. So let's, let's see, see what this is like. Um, of course, this has the focus tabs so you can manual focus. Um, like you sort of would on, on the Leica uh, M system. And it also is autofocus as well. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm gonna put down my M10 probably for, for a week. Might even put aside my Fuji I'm recording you on right now. And we're going to just try to use this for a week to see what I like. And at the end of the week, uh, I gotta decide, like was that, hey, I got it out of my system, we're good. I really wanna buy one now 
or wait for the Q3, which is expected to come out this year. Uh, I need to think about all these different things. So yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. This is just a quick borrow lenses unboxing like a Q2 and comparing it with, you know, the Leica M they're essentially the same size. The M10 is heavier because of its build makeup. Um, but yeah, essentially the same size. Okay. See you on future follow-up videos. Thanks for watching. So did you guys want to know what vlogging with a Leica Q2 is like? 28 millimeter f1.7, 1 50th uh, shutter speed, auto ISO for exposure. I can't see it's on face tracking, um, internal audio. This is what it'd be like if I were to record video of myself. If I wanted to show you something from behind the camera, that's what this would look like. There's an uh, Ilford HP 5 box. It gets there nice and slow. There's the writing on my Ember mug. I have to put it in the little square. Ooh, you struggled with that, didn't you? Yes, you did. How about this right here? Swing line stapler. Let's go try the Ember mug again. That's the first time it's done that. There we go. I got it. Nice and slow. How about my, my Fuji lens? Yup, there we go. How about that Leica? Leica logo. Alright. And then let's go back to me. I don't know. <laughs> Could this work? Ah, we're going to play with it for a week. See how it goes. For shooting. Photos, mostly.